In Zimbabwean elections, the concept of winner takes all takes on a whole new meaning. In 2018, Emerson Mnangagwa, the ZANU-PF leader, won the presidential poll by less than 1% and obviously didn't fancy his odds in future elections. He created a body called the Political Actors Dialogue, or POLAD, and invited 17 losing presidential candidates to join. Between them, they had received less than 5% of the vote. Mnangagwa ensured that this arrangement was impossible for the NDC alliance to join. These losing parties readily agreed and have enjoyed regular meetings, drones, allowances, and even cars for their commitment to democracy, Zanu PF style. Since the 2018 election, the second placed MDC alliance has seen its votes taken away and given to the distant third placed MDC team. That party then recalled MDC Alliance members of parliament and replaced them with members of the MDCT who had lost the constituencies they stood in, if they stood at all. This makes the MDCT now recognized as the official opposition, even though it recorded a fraction of the votes won by the MDC Alliance in 2018. Sounds confusing? Well, let's start with a very simple example of how. How the national election body and the justice system all work in a synchronized fashion to reverse engineer history. In the 2018 election, MDC Alliance's Gift Konjana challenged ZANU-PF representative Dexter Nduna in the Chegutu West constituency. After the vote count, Nduna registered more votes than Konjana and the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, or ZEC, declared him the winner. However, a recount showed that the MDC Alliance Konjana had more votes than his opponent and was in fact the winner. But Zek declared it did not have the authority to announce a different result. So the more popular Konjana started the legal journey to have his majority votes recognized. He went to the Zimbabwe Electoral Court and lost to the Supreme Court and lost, and finally to the Constitutional Court, only to be told that his case was defective. So in Chegutu, the loser remains the winner. The case of the MDC Alliance is even more complicated. Following the death of the MDCT's founding leader, Morgan Trangirai, in 2018, the party split into the MDCT, led by Toko Zanikupe, and the MDC Alliance, led by Nelson Chamisa. Trangirai, on his deathbed, appointed two additional party vice presidents to join Kupe, who was then the only vice president. This was in violation of the party's constitution, but Chamisa, who is a lawyer, ignored that detail and rode his populism to take over the party and rebrand it under the MDC Alliance name. Soon after that, the national elections took place and the MDC Alliance routed the MDC team. The MDC team, under Toko Zanikupe, was encouraged to challenge Chamisa's leadership of the MDC Alliance in the courts. The central pretext being that at the 2014 Congress, Toko Zanikupe had been the only vice president under Changirai. The High Court ruled that she was not only the legitimate leader of the MDCT, but also the inheritor of all votes cast for a completely different party, Nelson Chamisa's MDC Alliance. The Supreme Court upheld this decision in March 2020. Cooper's triumph was short-lived. At the latest MDCT Congress at the end of 2020, Douglas Monzora ousted her as party leader. In the 2018 polls, Monzora had not stood for election, but has supported the NDC alliance under Chamisa. Monzora is now the one recognized by the government as the head of the official opposition. Chamisa has been forced to abandon his link to the MDC name and rebrand his party, the Citizens Coalition for Change. Can an opposition party, even one led by such a popular figure as Chamisa, ever hope to succeed when it stands against a ruling party that has the army, 
police, courts, electoral commission and unlimited state resources to ensure it rules for another 40 years.